How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Obi6 Killer. Welcome back to the Zodiac Trial. Let's get back into this. Uh, the game still hasn't released as of yet, but should be out very shortly, I believe. After a bit more chat, everyone gathered in the center of the room to discuss the situation. Well, I'll say it, folks. This right here, it's pretty not cool. You know, I'm starting to suspect you might just, you might be right. Agreed. It's been a while since someone else came, hasn't it? You think this is everyone? Probably. After all, with us, this makes 12. What's that got to do with anything? Oh, come now. With everyone's nickname, surely you should be able to figure it out. It's rather level 1 symbology. Level 1? Uh, if you two are right about that being everyone, shouldn't we have heard something by now? I thought they said we were going to get more information here. See, this kidnapper's fucking with us. I say we just storm out of here. Look, judging from what I saw of the school's layout, the front entrance is probably right down that corridor when you turn right. What's stopping us from just getting the hell out of here? The door will almost certainly be locked. What then? I'll fucking smash it down, what do you think? And hey, we got horse and tiger right here. They're probably even better at that than me. But we'd be ignoring what the Jade Emperor said. Did you hear what they said? They'd probably kill us. It's a suicide mission. Oh, the plan has my vote. This isn't a voting situation. There's no need to rush at present. Surely we can afford to wait a bit longer, no? Patience is a virtue. We were getting unruly. However, as if on cue, the warped voice on the speakers began to speak once more. It appears everyone has gathered at the starting line. Please relax yourselves, talk with the other races, and wait for a few more minutes. The Jade Emperor will appear to explain the rules shortly. And just like that, the voice cut off. Appear? Does that mean the perpetrator is going to come to us in person? I guess that settles that debate though. Like hell it does. I don't know how this changes anything. Dragon, please, I understand your frustrations. They're perfectly natural. However, I believe if you take some time to reflect, I have been reflecting. And I've reflected that I want to get the hell out of here. But do you think it'd be better to face this head on instead of trying to run away? I ain't running away from anything. Of course, of course. I'm just saying it sounds like whoever brought us here is going to be showing up shortly. Don't you want to meet with this punk face to face? You know what, you're right. How about this asswipe show his face in front of me? How about that? Well, I'm glad that's been settled. With Dragon placated, the group started to fan out and make themselves at home. It sounded like we'd be waiting for a little bit more, after all, and everyone needed to chill out. I decided to sit down and take a deep breath. All the stress was messing with my head. After I calmed down a bit, I decided to head over and talk to some of the other captives. Nearby I overheard Tiger, Bunny and Rooster having a discussion about the kidnapper's intent. Ox, Dragon and Monkey, however, were discussing how to fight back against our captors. Pig and Horse, meanwhile, were discussing the food and drink problem. On the other side of the cafeteria, I saw Dog asking Sheep about something. I also saw Snake sitting by himself at a chessboard. He seemed to be studying it with some fascination. So I was left with a choice. Who to talk to? Eww, I see. Interesting. Um. Let's go hang with dog and sheep. They seem pretty cool. Neither dog nor sh neither sheep nor dog look particularly upbeat. Not that I could blame them. The two seem to be having a rather bleak conversation at the side of the room, so I thought they could use some cheering up. Do you really think they're going to kill us? Who knows? We can only hope. Hey guys, what's going on? Not much, we were talking about how we're probably going to die today. I thought you said there was just one possibility. Yeah, a pretty likely possibility. Hey now, let's cut it out with that sort of talk. I don't want to be like Tiger and say the situation is a good thing or anything, but if we start thinking negative things, if we start thinking negatively, things are just going to get worse. So what, if we start thinking positively, things are suddenly going to get better? They are? Okay, I'll start right now. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. In a nice, comfy, empty bed with a nice cup of cocoa and a book and no scary collar on my neck. Uh, sheep? I don't think you need to go that far. Eh, let her try to delude herself if she wants. And while we're at it, how about you stop trying to make me cheer up as well, huh? What? I'm a pretty chilled out guy in most things. I'm not the type to intercede on someone else's account if it's not affecting anybody. And all I ask is that courtesy to be returned in kind. If I want to sulk her about being kidnapped, let me sulk. It's not your place to tell people how to cope. Oh, well, uh, sorry about that, dog. I didn't mean to be pushy or anything. 
It's fine, I don't really care. Just don't do it again. That means you do care. So, um, uh, Sheep, you said earlier that you're pretty sure that the 12 of us is everybody. Why did you think that? Oh, well, it's just a guess, but it's based on the animals here. I have to think that whatever is happening is based loosely on the Chinese zodiac animals. Zodiac animals? Oh yeah, I've heard of those. A patron of mine was talking about them a while back. Wait, patron? I run a bar. Didn't used to, but now I do. Get a lot of customers, most of which like to talk a lot. Anyway, if I remember right, every animal has a year. It's like a 12 year cycle or something, right? Sort of. It's true that having it be the year of the dragon or year of the snake is probably the most common place where you'd hear of them. However, that's just the tip of the iceberg. The zodiac animals have a lot of cultural significance. What makes you think this is inspired by the zodiac animals anyway? Well, for one, for one, the 12 of our animal masks are exactly the 12 zodiac animals. Yeah, that's pretty compelling evidence right there. And the game's called the Zodiac Trail. <gasps> that might be why. And also the kidnapper called themselves the Jade Emperor, right? It's also a reference to the story of the zodiac animals, more specifically, the zodiac race. I'm not familiar with that part of the legend. Okay, so the specifics of the story actually change around a lot, depending on which version you're reading. A lot of old myths are like that, but the Jade Emperor is usually considered the person who held the race, and the one who gave each of the fastest 12 animals their position. Oh, and by the race, I'm referring to the Zodiac race, which was apparently this big race where all the animals competed, and the top 12 got places on the Zodiac calendar. The 12 fastest are the animals you see here, and the order is fixed. Though how exactly each animal got their position is sometimes open to interpretation. For instance, it's generally accepted that the mouse finished first by riding on the ox and then jumping ahead at the end. But other parts, such as the dragon stopping to save villagers or the snake scaring off the horse, those alter from telling to telling. Well, you're really knowledgeable about this stuff. Thanks. I like to read those sorts of old tales. I actually recently became a librarian after leaving my old job. Although, there's one part of the story that's been rubbing me the wrong way. Oh? Well, it could be nothing, just, uh... Basically, a lot of stories have it where there was actually a 13th contestant, the cat, who was disqualified because the mouse tricked them. It's meant to explain why cats hate mice. Oh, how naughty. I didn't know you had that sort of treachery in you, mouse. I don't. I'd never. You, you know what? This isn't worth arguing. So, why are you bringing this up, sheep? Uh, no reason. I was just wondering if that aspect of the story had any significance, seeing as our captor seems to be emulating the story. Gotcha. Um, thanks for letting me talk about that, Mouse. I'm feeling a bit better now. There's no need to thank me for that. After all, you did most of the work there. Does talking with me make you feel worse? Because honestly, understandable. <laughs> no, no, it's just... I don't know. I'm feeling like there's a lot of pressure right now. Oh, what do we say? Why are you feeling pressured? Why exactly are you so nervous? Because I got kidnapped by a mysterious person and now there's a bunch of strange people around and also there's a big scary metal collar around my neck? You know what? Fair. I'm not sure what answer you were hoping to get out of here, Mouse. My talk with sheep and dog concluded. I looked around to see if there was anyone else to talk to. Let's do pig and horse. I like these groups of two. Personally, this moment of rest was enough for me to realise that I was incredibly hungry and thirsty. When I saw a horse and pig addressing this problem, I decided to join them. Well, these water fountains seem to work well enough. It is the cafeteria at the high school after all. The problem comes with finding food. Maybe the kitchen has some stuff. I already checked over there, it's empty. Done, then what do we do? Right over there, the vending machines. They've got some snacks. Hey, you're right. Not the healthiest of meals. Honestly, at this point, I'd eat up just about anything. But there is a problem. How are we going to get the snacks? I mean, it's a vending machine. I don't suppose you happen to have any change on you. I checked my pockets and shook my head. Damn. Well, maybe someone else had money on them when they were taken. No need. Stand back. I didn't even have time to process his warning before he took three running strides and put his foot through the vending machine's glass. In a glorious instant, the barrier separating me from my meal fell apart. Pieces scattered everywhere. There you go. Whoa. Oh my god, that was so cool. He just ran up and like, 
Bam! Some sort of tank or something. Or something out of a superhero comic. How strong are you? That's incredible. Hardly. No, you really are. That was fantastic to watch. And without you, I'd be starving. I mean, to be real, I didn't want to be a pain or anything, but I was really hungry. Well, I'm just glad I can be useful. You okay? You shattered a ton of glass with your foot. With my boot. And my pants go down to my boot. I'm fine. Look. Horse gestured to his kicking leg. That way is a horse. Sure enough, other than a slight tear in his pant leg, he looked pretty much unscathed. Wow. Impressed, I headed over to the loot and grabbed a handful of snacks. Pig and horse followed suit and we sat down at one of the nearby tables. Man, lunch. Did vending machines used to have food this good? Because I feel like they definitely didn't. Who knows, maybe it's due to the hunger and the fear and all that. Seriously, horse? That was really impressive. I already told you it was nothing. But I'm curious, how'd you get that strong? Because, like, you're super, super strong. Unnaturally so. Thanks? It's a compliment, trust me. Anyway, answer the question. Well, I work for a construction company, so I do a lot of physical labor day in, day out. Carry heavy things for long enough, you get used to it. Honestly, work feel more, feels more like a workout, which is just fine with me. A construction company, huh? Sounds interesting. Why'd you choose to work there? No real deep reason, really. Why does anyone work? I need income. I chose construction work because I'm a moron who's not capable enough for a lot of higher functioning jobs. I know the feeling. That's not true. No, it is. You don't know me, so you don't know how I can make... <laughs> I don't know how you can make an objection here. I'm not saying the construction workers are all dumb. Plenty of my co-workers are smart enough to be teaching at colleges. I'm just saying personally, I'm dumb and I get along, get along fine at the job. The pay is reliable, the work's simple and fulfilling. I was looking for work and thought, hey, that seems pretty good, and I'm pretty strong. I should give that a try. I thought you said that you got strong after working at this construction company for a while. Oh, right. I mean, I wasn't weak before I started working there. I went to the gym regularly. No real reason why. So I guess I've been kind of strong for a while. I just mean, I didn't really develop my muscles until I got my job there. Being a construction worker sounds nice. I can never do something like that, obviously, but I like the idea of it. A nice straightforward job that stays the same every day. I'm guessing your job is a little more hectic then. Heh, <laughs> job. I wish it was that simple. What do you mean? I make my living through a hodgepodge of miscellaneous commissions and part-time gigs. How much you get paid depends on how much work I'm able to find and do. Huh? How's that work? Well, back in college I got the bright idea that I didn't want to have some boring normal job. I thought I could make more than enough doing things online. That's been kind of a disaster, but I'm kind of making it work. If only by juggling a thousand projects. What kind of projects? Well, I do a lot of investigative research, write commissioned articles for a lot of different websites. But I think pieces or pop culture takedowns or current events. I also have my own blog, which makes piss poor ad revenue. But it's got a f fair enough following, seeing as it's only a scattered assortment of random essay topics I think of in my free time. I'm also something of a graphic designer, so a lot of people will hire me for small projects, helping make their things look pretty. I've also got some video editing experience, so I handle things of that nature whenever I can. Oh, and I guess on a couple of podcasts. That's most of it, usually. Man, how do you possibly manage all that? Copious amounts of day planners and caffeine. Caffeine it is. You know it. Sounds like a nightmare to me. I'm not cut out for that sort of life. Sometimes I wonder if I am either. Well, why don't you get a normal job then? I mean, with all of your, all of this, your resume should look pretty packed, right? Well, I don't know about that. I'm not sure working for just one company on their schedule really suits me. I mean, I know I complain about how I make my living, but I do enjoy it deep down. Yeah, I can understand that. Law school is rarely fun, but I'm pretty firm in what I want to do in life. So you're still in school? Yes, but I'm almost done with it. Law school takes a while, you know. Makes sense. It's good that you're becoming a lawyer. We need good lawyers. It's a rare take, but I'm thankful for it. I'll try to be. It was nice to take a break and eat and drink. Still, I ought to talk with as many people as I can while I have the chance. However, before I could talk to anyone else, an announcement was played over the speakers. Attention, attention, attention to all animals present. Please take a seat, face the TV, and put on your animal masks. The introduction is about to begin. Introduction? I guess this is what they meant when they said the Jade Emperor will appear. It was just a streamed appearance. 
figures. What? Are you fucking serious? What a load of bullshit. Calm now. At this point, you might as well go along with it and hear what they have to say. Why do they want us to put on our animal masks, though? Who cares? Let's just do it. Agreed. After a bit of commotion, everyone complied. We all sat in the various seats around the cafeteria and put the animal masks over our heads. Once everyone had done so, the television flickered on. There before us was the Jade Emperor, leaning back in a chair. I couldn't tell where he was sitting. The room behind him was so dark. However, it seemed that this was a live feed. The Jade Emperor wore a mask which completely covered his face, as well as a green hoodie, jeans and some gloves. I couldn't help but notice that by his left hand I could see part of a butterfly tattoo sticking out. Welcome one and all to the Zodiac Race, or rather, the Zodiac Trial. I am the host of this event. You may call me the Jade Emperor. You all, if you have not realized yet realized, will be the 12 Zodiac animals who will compete in my race. I knew it. You might ask why you are animals. There are a number, number of good answers to this question, but to put it simply, you all live your lives with the awareness of animals. You go about day to day without a goddamn care in the world, peacefully moving onwards, never stopping back to reflect or apologizing for your sins, your murder, Sins? What are you talking about? Oh, don't pretend you don't know, you filthy, glory-hungry liar. You see, perhaps not all of you know it, but the twelve of you were the jury of a particular trial. Of course, you weren't the actual jury. I don't blame them. What I mean is that each of you made selfish or stupid choices. Each of you were complicit. Each of you decided to help hang an innocent man for a murder he did not commit. And this idea you all have, that you get to walk away from that and not look at what you've done, it's sickening. It's not fair. You all deserve a chance to be punished. You all must be tired, tried. So this is what we're doing today. A Zodiac trial. A trial? You mean to say there's going to be a case against us or something? Perhaps my word choice has given off the wrong impression. Initially, I had an idea more similar to that. However, I think instead we shall settle this with a race. A race fitting for the beasts you are. What are the rules for this race? Finally, someone is asking the proper questions. Please take a look at this display. As you can see, your 12 animals are lined up on the left, going from top to bottom in the order they, came, they come on the calendar. You may also notice there are 24 spaces between the starting line for the animals and the end of it. The aim of this race is to use the tablets provided to move your animal to the finish line as quickly as possible. So that's what these are for. Before continuing, I think it would be pertinent to address a certain rule you will all likely find important. Each tablet may only be operated by its owner additionally the owner must be alone in a room when using it. If you operate your tablet with another person in the room, or if someone else operates your tablet, you will be instantly executed. Executed? God damn it. A dismaying but expected announcement. What the fuck? Hey asshole, you think you can kill me that easily? Oh, but I can, for you see, each of your necklaces are outfitted with a devious device. With the mere push of a button, knives on the inside of the collar will come out cleanly slicing your necks open, leaving you to die. How does it feel, knowing that just like that you could be executed, dead? Feel fun? Is it enjoyable for you scum? So we're gonna die? No, you'll only push that button if we break your rules, right? There's a bit more to it than that, but you're right that I won't kill you for no reason. There'd be no point to any of this if it was just a senseless murder. No, I guarantee that if all of you behave appropriately, every single one of you can leave here alive. So what else do we got to do to survive? The race will consist of 12 rounds. If no animals are able to get to the finish, line at the end of the 12 rounds, all of you will be executed. Every round will last 45 minutes. All participants must take action within those 45 minutes. If a participant does not take action during a round, they will be executed. At the end of the round, the animals take their actions in order from the top of the screen to the bottom. Using the tablet 
there are a few, av few available actions to choose from. All animals are able to simply run. Choosing run will move your animal one space forwards. You may also choose to use your animal ability. Each animal has their own ability which can help them in the race. Be sure to click the information button to learn what your ability does. Participants are also allowed to confess once per game. If you choose confess, then at the end of the round, when it is your animal's turn, you'll be given an opportunity. You may use this one minute opportunity to give a meaningful confession to me. Afterwards, I'll rate the effectiveness of the confession and your animal may move anywhere from zero to five spaces. What's the ranking judged on? Are you looking for most surprising? Worst thing done, most emotionally delivered was the deal. I'm under no obligation to tell you that. Try it for yourself if you're so curious. Finally, you can also choose to use an item. Throughout the school I've hidden some things of practical use as well as items to be used in the race. The physical item will have a passcode on it. Input the passcode into your tablet to use it. Only one participant may use any given item per round. There are a total of 24 items in the school, a minor and major trinket for each animal. All animal ma minor trinkets are the same. Using it will move your number of spaces equal to the number of other animals who've used a minor trinket that turn. For example, if you use the mouse minor trinket by yourself, you'll move one space forward. However, if you use the mouse minor trinket, a friend uses the ox minor trinket, and two enemies use the tiger and bunny minor trinkets, you all move four spaces. On the other hand, the major trinkets each have their own effect. You'll have to figure out what they do by finding them yourselves. Even though each animal has a minor and major trinket based on them, they're not exclusive to said animal. So if dog wanted to use pig's minor trinket, that's totally allowed. What a childish game for us to stake our lives on. It really makes you all seem small in comparison, doesn't it? Anyways, that is the essence of this race. At the end of each round, after all the animals have taken their actions, if any animal has made it to the finish line, the race will end. Those at the finish line will have their collars automatically unlock, and everyone else will be executed. No. What, seriously? <laughs> How you choose to run the race is up to you. Who knows? Maybe you'll all make it out of it alive. Although if I had to guess, the slowest third will end up dead. Either way, I'll be satisfied. I truly hope you let your true colours fly. Open up your hearts and think of this as Anubis's feather. Will you pass peacefully or be devoured? Let judgment fall blindly and wisely. Round one begins now. And with that final confusing message, the speaker cut off, and he let us, left us to panic and squabble on our own, the threat of death now officially looming over us. My mind went blank. I could feel my face flushing, somehow hot and cold at the same time. My fingers were a jittery mess. This was horrible, scary, nonsensical. Who in their right mind would dress up a, like a character from some ancient legend and force people to play some stupid, confusing, arbitrary game with their lives at stake? Surely the Jade Emperor from Legend didn't wear a green hoodie. <laughs> it sounds unlikely. It was so weird, it was so scary, and yet... I took a deep breath in, and another out, and all of a sudden, it all just flushed from my system. I was still scared and confused deep down. But the mind-numbing panic the others were in, that I was in a second ago, it had left me. This was my greatest talent, something I'd inherited from my father. When the stakes are high, the chips are down and the fear chokes you. But I could choose not to feel it. It was a weird thing, it was like I could just choose to not feel any other emotion. But fear? For some reason I had perfect control of it. For now, I had to survey the scene. People were freaking out, just like I was. I can't, I don't want to die. Please, please, come on, Mr. Jade Emperor. We can work something out, can't we? Come back on screen or something. I'm sure we can come to some kind of understanding here. What? You think you can kill me just because you got some fucking knives in my throat or something? Fuck you. And fuck your whole deal, I'll mess you up. You're nothing more than a coward hiding behind a fucking desk. This can't be happening. Surely this is some sort of... No, but it can't be a mistake. Things were abundantly clear. Is this how I meet my end? As... as inelegantly as this? There must be some sort of mistake. Man, I can't stand you. If no one speaks up, they'd all likely be spinning their wheels for quite a bit. That was time I couldn't afford to waste. Hey everyone. 
Everyone needs to quit panicking and take a deep breath. With that, I got everyone's attention. Look, I know this really sucks. But it's not like we're doomed or anything. The Emperor himself said if we keep our cool, all of us can get out of this alive. There's no reason to panic yet. Everything's going to be okay. But Mouse is right, you all need to quit moping around. Who's that going to help, huh? No one. The answer's super simple. The only thing we got to do is cross that finish line at the same time, before the 12 rounds. It's as simple as that. Is it really going to be that simple? It's hard to say at the moment. We may run into complications. However, Mouse and Tiger are right. We're far from being out of options. If we keep cool, it's fairly likely we, we can get out of this fine. For now, we should all find separate rooms and check out our tablets. Specifically, knowing what everyone's individual abilities are might be useful. Sounds about as good a plan as anything else. Keep inner peace at difficult times can be a struggle, but we must strive for it. Fine, for now we'll work together. What do you mean for now? It seems as though the group was able to come to their senses together. Good. Great. With this, things should be fine. There's no reason to panic. We all started walking off to separate rooms. Dragon Snake and I walked down the left hallway. Still, who the fuck would want to put me in this bullshit? I wonder, could it be him? Before I could ask what Snake was musing about, he entered the library alone. Dragon entered the teacher's office to the left, and I went a little further and found a labor laboratory. After checking to make sure no one else was in the room with me, I tried turning my tablet on. Sure enough, I was brought to a fairly standard looking screen. Usefully, the top right actually displayed the, t the time left before the end of the round. There was a number of buttons. Run, action, confess, and item. And at the top, there was an information button. It's like a turn but it's like a JRPG. That was what I wanted for now. I clicked on it and it brought me to a separate page. Personality? Clever. What did that mean? Whatever, it's probably some dumb flavor text this psycho had included. More importantly, I looked at the section titled Mouse Ability. Sneaky ride, huh? Apparently, every turn, turn I can target another animal. Then during their action, I can move the same number of spaces in the same direction as them. I guess that could be useful. Though it seemed like I couldn't do much by myself. At any rate, now that I knew my ability, I decided to return to the cafeteria. It wasn't long before everyone else was gathered too. So, was everyone able to manage their tab tablet properly? It was a bit of a trial, I must admit, but it was no match for me. It's a pretty good coding job. This wasn't just thrown together, whoever made it clearly spent quite a bit of time on it. What are you talking about? It's just a few buttons. That's, um... Tiger, I think you're underestimating the work coders do. Even something as simple as creating a clean, well-working UI with nothing but custom code could be a real challenge. Plus, it's apparently connected to the system, which will move our animals around. That's not even mentioning how it was modded onto a pre-established tablet, which tends to have a hell of a lot of firewalls to stop stuff like that. I mean, it's not like it's the most amazing invention of all time, but there's definitely a bit of work that went into it. No shit. A lot of work also went into kidnapping 12 people and decking a whole school out to be a, fu <laughs> to be a fucked up killing game. Is this discussion fruitful? Surely our time would be better spent discussing the abilities we each possess. That's an excellent point, monkey. We ought to start talking about that. In fact, I'll start. My ability is called Sneaky Road. It allows me to choose an animal, and then later, when that animal moves, I move the same number of spaces. A reference to the original fable, no doubt. It's a pretty handy ability. I guess, but it's kind of dependent on other people. That's why it's so handy. It's a perfect example of mirrored play. Mirrored play? It's a concept that comes up in a lot of places, though most frequently in gambling. Just as an example, let's say you and Rooster had a little bet gun. You two were at a casino, and you were competing to see who, see who could win the most money at a roulette table in an hour. Huh, I'm down. Rooster, this is just an example. Now let's say with 15 minutes left, Mouse, you got 45 chips, and Rooster has 30 chips. What? I rule at roulette, why would I be losing? Like Mouse said, it's hypothetical. Well, your hypothetical sucks if it involves me losing. Fine, you're at 45 and she's at 30. Happy? Yeah, that fits much better. Great. Now let's say that Mouse bets all of her 30 chips on black. What would you do? Easy, I'd bet 45 chips on red. Why? Because I'm not to be outdone and red's my lucky colour. You sound like you'd be fun to gamble with. But no, the right choice would be also to bet 30 on blue. Yeah, because then if black loses, he still wins. 
If the roulette ends up on red, she'd be out and you'd be left with 15. Whereas if the roulette ends up on black, you'd still be leading 90 chips to 60. Yeah, but if you bet 45 on red, it ends up on red. You have 90 and stupid mouse would have nothing. You realise that in the context of the bet, it doesn't matter if you win by 90 or if you win by 15, right? Maybe if you're playing a coward's game. Okay, well I think Roos is not going to get it, but I hope my overall point is clear. Mirror play refers to the strategy where, if you're in the lead, sometimes your best bet is to just copy what your opponent does. That way, they'll never be able to catch up to you. In the context of the race, if Mouse only had one opponent, and she was in the lead, this ability would guarantee her victory. Of course, the issue with the strategy both here and elsewhere is that other people exist. It's not like you can copy all 11 people's moves. But if you knew who would move the most spaces each turn, you can guarantee a joint, a joint win, at least. I see what you mean. Still, I don't know how helpful it would be for getting a joint, a 12-way joint win. I don't think my ability is going to be very, going to be any more useful. I've got a thing called Stampede. Basically, it allows me to move to the space behind the animal currently in first place. That doesn't sound that bad. But if you're way behind, that can move you way further up. Yeah. Sure, but it never actually lets me take the lead. But we're not trying to win here. We're all just trying to get to the end at the same time. Plus, thanks to the movement order, it'll always work out so that after I stampede, the person in first will be able to move again. My ability's super cool. It's called Dive. It lets me instantly move to the nearest river. With that, you can take an early lead and move eight spaces forward on the first turn. Yeah, but it doesn't seem to be the most consistent ability. After all, it's the closest river, yeah? I'll need to move forward a bit before I can use it again, if I don't want to jump back to the first river. And after I pass the second river, it's completely useless. At least your ability is consistent. Mine's called Lucky Bounce. It moves my animal either one, two, or three spaces forward at random. Well, how far does Run move you? At random? That's odd. Why? Well, all the other abilities seem consistent. It's an odd design choice to add a single piece of randomness. Yeah, well, I think it's probably based on the idea of a lucky rabbit's foot. It's pretty useless, though. My ability's pretty kick-ass. At least this jade fuck has the good sense to let me fuck shit up. I've got Dragon Breath. I can choose any lane to breathe fire on. At the end of the turn, anyone on that lane gets burned. And they won't be able to move for the next three turns. An offensive ability? Won't be able to move, huh? So that means abilities that don't involve you, moving, would still be active. Seems like. That might be useful if someone tries to rush to first place. Or if Dragon wanted to rush to first place. Ah, oh, quit your whining, will you? I know I might have... I might have come across bad, but I'm not sh not some scum who'd sacrifice others to save herself. I was just, you know, angry at the fact that I was kidnapped and put in this situation. It's alright, Dragon, we forgive you. Yo, I'm not apologizing for shit. Get that through your head. I'm just saying, I'm not looking to kill anyone today. Well, we'll leave it at that then. Snake, what about you? Ah, my turn to, to my ability, yes? I believe it would be prudent for me not to say it at this moment. What? Snake, are you serious right now? I ask that you trust me when I say that I doubt there will be much use in this situation. That's not the point, Snake. We all agreed we'd share our abilities. As a matter of fact, I don't believe anyone ever said that. Merely that we should all check them and re reconvene. But either way, I don't hide my ability for no good reason. While I would love for everyone to work together and get out smoothly, I somehow doubt that the Jade Emperor would go through all this if it would be simple. There's a real chance we'll end up having some among us who betray the group's trust and attempt to win alone. In that case, my ability may be a last minute tool to prevent such a scenario. However, I must admit, my ability is highly conditional. If a potential betrayer knew it ahead of time, they'd easily be able to counteract it. Therefore, for the sake of the group, I believe it best to keep this ability to myself until further notice. Well, that, that it makes sense, I guess. You make a convincing argument, I must admit. I don't like it. Me neither. How do we know that anything this fuck said is even true? Look, if I really had nefarious intentions, I could simply make up an ability of not much use and claim it as my own. Does the fact that I'm outwardly withholding my ability not in itself imply that I'm trustworthy? Seems like some backwards logic to me, but whatever floats your boat. <laughs> it's definitely backwards logic. Whatever, we don't have time to go back and forth like this. We can't start doubting each other this early. If Snake says he's got a good reason for withholding his ability, I'm going to trust him. I appreciate that, Mouse. No, your trust is not misplaced. His name's Snake as well. I'm worried about that. <laughs> well, if that's settled, should I go next? Yeah, go ahead. I've got a move called Steady Gallop. 
lets me move three spaces. That's it. That's it. So I guess it's just a better run then. It's simple. I like it. Would you look at that bunny? It appears horse simply got a better version of your ability. Hey, I guess you're right. How unfair is that? Who's balancing this thing? I don't know, maybe there are situations where it's better for your movements to be random. But you don't want to fall in the river. I struggle to think of a situation. Um, I don't know if my ability is any good. It's called Sweet Sleep. It does nothing on its own, but it lets me make two extra actions next turn. Ooh, that's pretty strong. That could be good. It's not exactly a very fast-paced or flashy ability, though. <laughs> Says the guy who can just... <laughs> oh, never mind. My ability is also conditional, however. If I find that it may be of use to the group, it's called Monkey See Monkey Do. It lets you take over an excavator and then attack uh, Yakuza people with it. It allows me to use any kind of these abilities that would... That abilities used last turn as if they were my own. Whoa, that's really powerful. So basically you got to use anyone's ability. That's like wicked busted, man. That's a bit, an ability fit for a main character, not some supporting role. Am I merely a supporting role? Uh, you're a therapist. You support people. That's your role. I don't know if it's actually all that powerful. I mean, don't get me wrong, in the right context, it could be great. But it's only ever going to be useful if other people are using their abilities. You can never fire the first shot, as you will. Instead, you're entirely dependent on the action of others. But if things get to the point where most people are using their abilities frequently, she'll be in a powerful position. Hopefully it won't get to that point. Alright, alright. Let's get to my ability already. And man, you guys are gonna love this. Seriously, you better start kissing my ass now trying to win me over. Just get on with it. I got a thing called Encouraging Crow. It moves any other animal four spaces forwards. Four spaces, huh? That could be pretty good. But you can't use it on yourself, right? Only other people. Yes, well, I imagine people will be begging for me to give them this blessing. Seems to me like, out of anyone, you're the one with the most supporting role in all of this. Well, you know what they say, if you shine the brightest, you only shine slightly brighter than everyone else's brightness. That's not what anyone says. I don't have time to try and deconstruct that. Dog, could you tell us your ability? Sure thing. Not that it's much of anything. It's called Rabid Leap. I jump over the closest person in front of me. And by jumping, I basically mirror my position in relation to theirs. Like if someone is one space in front of me, I'd move two spaces. But th that's super powerful, because that means you can just sit at the starting line, never move, wait until someone gets halfway through, and then jump them and instantly win. If someone's three spaces in front of me, I'd move six. The ability's not great unless I'm really far behind. But then again, since I came almost last in the moving order, it's basically a guaranteed two spaces at least. That's alright. Then I sh should I say what I do can do? Sure, go ahead. Okay, so my ability is called Loser's Desperation, for some reason. This is not a very good name, but it's a good ability. I can move one space for every person ahead of me, which means I can catch up if I'm far behind. Actually, considering that you come, in, you come last in the animal movements, it's not improbable that you could use it to move 11 spaces. Maybe, but even if I go to lead like that, I can't do anything when I'm ahead. It's worse than just running, when I'm in first. So that's that then. That's everyone's abilities. With that, we should probably wrap this up. We got the premise, uh, we know what we're going to have to do, and we know everyone's abilities. Good start. Interesting, interesting. Is there going to be some kind of trial or puzzle for each thing? Or do we just push the button on our tablet and away she goes and see what happens? I guess we'll find out. I imagine they're making us do it in a separate room so we can't collaborate. Or we have to try and collaborate together but then people that are going to betray other people can do it because they're separate from the group. I can't see this going well anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one.